Every year, I publish a radically open review of everything that happened in the last 12 months. And this year, you get to see it in video form. My name is Matteo, and in a very short while, you'll know quite a lot about me. But for starters, I'm a business storytelling coach, and this is my five-part review. In part one, we'll see what happened in the business. In part two, we'll see what happens in the financial realm. Then we'll go into the mind and into the personal business. And then we'll go on to the body and the planet. Let's get cracking. So this is this is my website, La Fabrica della Realtà, where you can find you can find this review. And let's start with with the business. So I've been doing this since 2014. So here you have the links to all the previous editions. And this year looks like this. So in 2019, you can see I had I had to really rethink my business. And from 2011 to 2019, I mostly have been working as a consultant in the sense that I was doing work for other companies and other businesses. And from 2020, I started mixing consulting and training. And I'm really happy to say that 2022 is the first year where all of the revenue is coming from training. And the, the business grew 39% and it grew by overshooting my goal of getting 18 new clients because I got 50 new clients. And with this growth comes the fact that, for instance, I've served so many new clients, so the, the, the invoice per client sort of went down. That wasn't, that wasn't in my plan. But I created some really interesting new opportunities for the business. One of the first reasons I got new opportunities is because I invested heavily in Google Ads. I basically gave Google 40 cents for every euro that I, that I made. And this in the longer term, in the, in the larger scheme of things, it's not sustainable. But for now, it allowed me to get in touch with so many important customers. And it's given me the opportunity to develop new content, to, to create new relationships. And I would go back and definitely do it again. I will not give 40 cents for every euro that I make in 2023, but it was worth it in, in 22. Now, the, the balance went 60% one-on-one coaching and 40% workshops. And for a first year of 100% training business, I'm really, really happy with that. The other thing I'm really happy is about is investing in courses and certifications. Like for instance, I got my first two Agile certifications at the beginning of the year, and I joined a Workshopper Master, which is an incredible community of facilitation experts and a sort of a mini mastermind kind of setup where I am learning a lot in terms of bringing the business to the next level. Another next level thing this year has been partnerships. I've been partnering with, uh, with Factory Berlin, with Silicon LA, and I've realized that I've been in this city for 11 years, I've been in Berlin for 11 years, and I haven't used the, the fantastic networks that are here. And I've, I don't mean just using, but putting myself at the disposal of those networks. And I'm gonna do more, more and more of that. You know, one of the things that hasn't happened this year, there's no progress on my diversity and inclusion project, Out Is You, and actually Educazione Globale, the, the website on education that I have been managing, is at the standstill. Maybe something will happen there in 2023. If we look at the analytics, uh, apart from the fact that it's increasingly incomprehensible and incoherent what comes out of Google Analytics, my organic traffic, my traffic overall, is down 41%, but I just posted three articles this year, so it's quite understandable. And I spent a ton of time, uh, really a ton of time, on creating new web pages and learning how Gutenberg works. Uh, and so I'm really happy that right now I'm really able to create these landing pages in absolutely no time, but it took a lot to really get into this new 
kind of technologies that are super speedy, super, super fast on the internet. And now for next year, for next year, I want to grow 100%. So basically, if you look at this graph here, uh, I like to be here to be almost at the level of 2016, you know, just just above 2017. And so that's that's going to take a lot of work uh, in the uh, in the new year. Um, then I definitely want to see a little bit of a profit margin. One of the things that has happened in the in these years of changing the business from consulting, I do something for you to consulting, I teach you or I do something with you has been losing a lot of margin. I had a 45% profit margin uh, after tax uh, and I don't know what, what the right profit margin is for training business, but I'm, uh, I'm looking for, let's say 30% for, for next year. I'll be happy with 20 as long as there is very significant growth. Now, my positioning is finally rock solid. I started the year still going all over the place. Two years ago, it was about open training. Last year, it was about presentation, storytelling, digital transformation, agile coach, none of that. Actually, just focus on business storytelling. And from business storytelling stems all the rest. And we can talk about this at length. Uh, and there's going to be videos this year about it as well. And so what is the split going forwards? I'm planning for 2023 to have 38% of the revenue from for co from coaching, so that's down from 60%. I plan to have 31% of revenue from workshops, and then there's something missing. There is another 31% missing, and that will be through a community-led online course. Now, I want to tell you all about this course, but this is not the right video to tell you about that. But I have the link and I have a link where you can sign up for my waitlist and then be the first to know everything about the new online course that I'm launching next year. So if you're interested, uh, there's uh, there's the link in my uh, in my article and you can sign up for for the waitlist there. Now, the financial this year has been a roller coaster uh, of a year, and mostly what happened in terms of finances is I invested a lot in this. This is my property uh, right outside Berlin in a beautiful uh, protected nature park. And what you can see here is the, the let's say, the renovations of the thatch roof. There was a big maintenance. Uh, a, a lot of work here on the ridge on this northern side and now I'm really proud of how it looks but that's not the only thing that is going on there's been renovations all around this is the barn that is in front of the house and here I'm building my high-tech office as you can imagine all of these activities are very capital intensive and so between investing in Google and investing in these new renovations uh, there hasn't been a lot left to invest Plus, it happened and actually this has come into the uh, property as well. This is a 1972 Alfa Romeo Giulia Super 1.6. It drives like a dream. It's been uh, freshly, uh, completely restored. So it's basically, it's a new car from 1972 in a super elegant uh, color with a fantastic little engine. And it drives like a dream and obviously that was also a little bit of a uh, capital intensive activity so the portfolios this year have performed poorly there's nothing nothing more to say about that there's i'm not losing overall i'm not selling so there's not a big deal i have this mortgage it has a, a fantastic interest rate compared to what is being offered right now so that's uh, that's great but google has really put a dent into into my profit margin into my my bottom line uh, and I need to get to a different uh, ROAS so a different return on advertising spend for for next year so what's happening next year so next year I really need to save a little I need to save a little uh, especially in terms of getting more cash reserves right now I'm really going you know invoice in to invoice out 
Um, unfortunately, I cannot grow the fleet, which would be my natural temptation, but I also want to enjoy the property. And how do I enjoy the property? By sharing it with, uh, uh, with people. Here you can see my parents visiting and you can see the roof in a previous uh, state, not the beautiful state that I showed you just now. And here we go into the personal and mind section of, uh, of this review. This is the most, uh, it's the most intimate part of the review, I guess. So this year I finished my third therapy uh, and I'm pretty enthusiastic about that. I've learned a lot throughout the previous therapies, but also this one was, was very, very insightful indeed. Uh, and I've been, I've become a ninja at letting go. So I'm really quick at, you know, getting all riled up about something and then actually being able to, to let go really, really quickly. But overall, it hasn't been a perfect year in terms of sleep. Um, I usually get, you know, get this problem waking up way earlier than, than I should or that I, that I could and not being completely rested. So if I woke up and I was completely rested, yeah, that would be, that would be totally fine. Plus I experienced this new category of anxiety that is the anxiety of having, you know, this money that is being spent by Google on the market and not getting the, the results. On the other hand, uh, getting very focused and productive with, uh, with GTD is always, always a, a, a lifesaver. And I've produced media, not a lot of media that you have seen because a lot of the media I produced is for marketing campaigns. And this is going to be stay the same for, for the next year. There's a lot of positive in this year. I, I just listed it here and it's sort of represented by one of my road trips to Italy this year, one of many, and uh, weddings, spending time with friends, enjoying the garden, uh, driving, yeah, actually getting all these renovations done. It's been fantastic. So for 2023, I think it's more of the same, a little bit more social, a bit more dating, uh, better routines, keeping up with the good routines and a bit of a better sleep. For the body, it's been a good year. It's been a year, again, of discovering new things, discovering how to cure my problems with the lower back by working one part of the body at a time. And so not working symmetrically, but exercising the left and the right side in, um, in separated exercises. And I've never feel, felt uh, fitter than, than this year, and so it's completely great. Although I had a big disappointment because I thought I would get my tonsils removed and this hasn't happened and it's actually in the German system. It cannot happen because I'm not following the criteria. And I had COVID in October. It was mild. It was very annoying as COVID can, uh, can be, but it was not a threatening situation. It was three days and then three days of intense symptoms uh, and then I was immediately negative. Actually, I was negative from, from the first day and then it was two or three weeks of feeling tired and sluggish, but I skipped my booster and I'm not going to do it next year. And finally, this is the section where I take care of the planet. Now, this year I've been a little bit more precise in my calculation of the CO2. Uh, I expected the house to produce more CO2, but actually calculating with the amount of gas that I'm using, uh, the amount of liquid propane gas that I'm using, it looks like that the heating of the house for this year was around two tons of CO2. I thought it would be much, much more. And as usual, I'm offsetting twice as much I'm producing. And I know offsets are not the ideal solution for this, but waiting for something better. This is what I'm doing. So thank you for uh, being on this journey with me. Thank you for being an accountability buddy. If you want to know more, if you want to keep in touch, the best way is my email newsletter. But if you're watching this video, I'm going to post new videos next year. So please like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching.